January the 1st, 2019 started off with a bang, explosively, emotionally, and sexually. Our mutual friends introduced us at the New Year's Eve party on the Gold Coast. We had no idea of their intentions, but we couldn't take our eyes off each other during the toast. Glasses were clinking, people were winking, but our eyes stayed transfixed as we kept on drinking. He moved in closer, wading through the crowds of pissed up people. I started to move too, not giving a shit if it was the right thing to do. I was way past the point of coherence. If we were incompatible, it certainly wasn't going to make a difference. We both knew what we wanted. Unapologetic, libidinous, no words needed night of passion. We must have said only a few words before we went outside to the lover's corner of this fantastic multifarious party. His lips were so plump and almost edible. We knew how it would go down, no fumbling, just incredible. He and I became far too amorous in front of a crowd of people, albeit in the same lustful scenario. We couldn't go to mine as I live in Brisbane so we took a taxi to his house next to a prison. From the moment we opened the door, it was savage and we fell on the floor. From the floor we moved to the kitchen, from there we stumbled into the shower. We polished each other clean, both bestowing power. It continued into his bedroom, and that is when it became real. It was a strange ending to our night of passion, but the cuddles, the spooning, the occasional grooming, it made us both realize we'd both been assuming. Assuming that it could have been the start of something new. Assuming that we could have been more deep and not so sexually blue. But the truth of the matter is, when two people have nothing to say to one another and nothing in common, there is no intellectual chemistry. When two people only find each other sexually and physically attractive, aesthetics will only work for one night, or maybe more. our backs turned to each other on New Year's Day. I thought that would be it with nothing to say. But he invited me out on his boat to swim in the ocean and maybe reenact last night on that very hot day. Without sounding shallow, he had the cutest ass, so I thought, why not? You don't have to take a pass.
We ventured out on the coast, found nooks and crannies and quiet places. Some beaches we even dared to swim nude, but still, somehow, the thought of touching each other seemed rude. We were pleasant to one another, but it, it felt like we'd only just met, despite the night before of unconstrained, debauched abandonment. As a Brit living in Australia, I've gotten to like the honesty of Aussie men, but it takes a long while to really know them. Shoot me down. I've been hanging around forever. Like a bang bang conversation. Shoot me down. Like a bang bang and the pain it lasts. He seemed no different. Whereas I am more implicit. Maybe that contrast could work if we could get over our wariness. I'm speaking in present tense now. Before it was past tense, but please bear with me as it gets immense. As we were on the beach, I spontaneously bent down to kiss his brow. We looked at each other seemingly in sync. This moment is inedible and feels intrinsic. Maybe we don't need to say much to each other after all. Maybe our psyches can connect without our words to object. The intellectual part of a relationship doesn't have to start with a bang. That could come in time when you've learned to understand. And now, the future tense. It worked for a while with great sex, some conversation and little reservation, but the boat rides, deserted beaches and desire in our eyes lasted only two months before our demise. I have no regrets and I'm not disheartened, for each new affair makes it stronger to bear. They say gay men are promiscuous and cold, but I'll know when it's right, and I'm gonna be bold. <laughs>